in the community. We recently launched a design challenge looking for a uh, sport-specific design of a terminal device. And a terminal device is the hand end of a prosthetic that screws into the socket with a standard bolt. <coughs> uh, prosthetists work with, uh, they, they make the socket, they do get the terminal devices from other places, and this is a great solution for a number of reasons. Uh, Skip Betts, who's done all sorts of wonderful work. This challenge actually was his brainstorm, and um, he's going to talk about an emulator device that has a lot of uses outside of the terminal challenge, but is particularly relevant for the challenge. And um, he's got some stuff to show us, so I'm going to pass this over to Skip. There you go, Skip. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, we have had some earlier presentations of things that would be accessories for you uh, to test out terminal devices. And we've upgraded that, and I'd like to share it with uh, the whole community as well as the people that are working on the challenge. First of all, to show you a little about a terminal device, um, Justine mentioned that there's a standard screw that connects the terminal device to the rest of the prosthesis, typically the uh, socket that goes on to the, uh, the, to the user's residual limb. And you can see that uh, we are using a standard hex half-inch uh, fine thread screw. And we hold that into the terminal device with a couple of pegs. You can use uh, number six screws, or you can use pegs made from uh, three millimeter filament, uh, or anything else you can think of that'll hold that in place. And what we typically do is put on a washer and a rubber ring and what that does for you is that allows the terminal device to uh, have some friction when you rotate it um, on the prosthesis. So here's one all rigged up into the device I'm going to show you today. I'm calling this an emulator. The idea is to emulate the uh, prosthesis uh, so that an able-bodied person can see what it's like to use this particular terminal device. And so it, the terminal device, as I mentioned, connects to the prosthesis or the emulator with that half-inch 20 screw, and it can rotate and stay where you put it um, by the fact that there's that frictional ring um, between the device and the prosthesis. And Basically, the emulator is a piece of uh, half inch, um, one and a quarter inch plastic pipe that you can get from any hardware store, a printed end cap, and three thermoformed printed flat pieces that form cuffs that can attach to your arm. And these cuffs are attached to the pipe with just uh, sheet metal screws. And it'll be kind of obvious how to do that, I hope, but we'll make some instructions. And it just slips on the able-bodied person's arm. Now, one critical thing is to get the hinge right on the hinge of the elbow. Uh, there's a little bump on your elbow uh, that you may be able to feel with your other hand. Uh, this is called the epicondyle, and it's sort of a good locator for where the hinge point is. So you get that hinge on your epicondyle, and you can just start strapping it on with uh, Velcro straps. And this allows the uh, terminal device to work on a Bowden cable in much the same way that, uh, let's see if I can hold it this way, that um, a split hook works on uh, a traditional prosthesis. Um, there's a Bowden cable that normally would be connected to a shoulder harness. So when the user moves his shoulder, it pulls the cable and it opens a normally closed split hook that's held in place with a rubber band. Well, the normally closed idea, rubber band holding it closed, is something we've been delighted to work out uh, with terminal devices like the uh, thing we're calling a gripper thumb. And the one that I'm showing you now is a more cosmetic, normal hand looking version of the gripper thumb. And you can see how that works when you, let's see if I can turn around. When you extend your arm, it pulls the Bowden cable, which is connected to the uh, 
um, hinge between the uh, triceps cuff and the cuff below the elbow uh, and runs to the, uh, the thumb of this particular terminal device. So when I extend my arm, it pulls the thumb open. When I relax my arm or uh, flex it, it uh, allows the rubber band to pull the thumb closed. And as I said, it can rotate. And so that's a very useful feature. And um, the nice thing about having this particular uh, uh, emulator, rather than what we have used earlier on, uh, is, is just holding the terminal device in your hand, hooking up a Bowden cable to your, your uh, upper arm. Um, the, the problem with this idea is it allows you to have more range of motion of the terminal device than you will have when the terminal device is, is rigidly attached to your residual arm. And what's going to, the benefit of, of using this for your investigation, if I can find spoon, if you want to, for instance, use this hand-like terminal device for uh, eating with a spoon, you'll find something that might not have been obvious to you. You can turn, rotate the hand so that the spoon is level and it'll pick up your food, but when you move it over to your mouth, it tips over. And so you end up holding your arm in a very awkward position trying to keep your spoon level when you get it up to your face. And you may not notice uh, that your terminal device is gonna be dependent on Oh, by the way, you can, can learn to practice with the terminal device like the recipient has to do. Uh, you'll forget that uh, when you extend your arm, you're going to be dropping things until you get used to the idea. And uh, so the uh, uh, emulator is going to be useful for a training tool, we believe, for um, clinical people when they are uh, presenting a prosthesis or a new kind of terminal device to um, a, a patient or a recipient. So um, the clinician can use this as a demonstrator. The designer can use it to work the bugs out of the design and discover things like, is the orientation gonna be where it needs to be to do the job that you want it to do for whatever the task is. So uh, basically, I just, I know we've got a busy agenda today, and I'll just show you basically a couple of things about how it's uh, connected. There's a Bowden tube, I mean a Bowden cable with a little ball on the end. We print this ball and we use a nylon filament like a weed whacker filament or some nylon filament, uh, 1.75 millimeter uh, nylon filament that you might be using on your printer. Um, that makes a great Bowden cable and you just uh, put the little uh, ball on the end of it and melt the tip of the nylon with uh, a soldering iron. And by the way, when you put things together with the uh, rivets made from plastic rods like filament, uh, you can use a soldering iron to flatten out a rivet head on those. But the, uh, the Bowden cable just hooks right into the uh, thumb in this case, uh, to the moving part of the uh, uh, terminal device and the other end of it is attached to the emulator so that when you extend your arm it pulls on the cable and this is adjustable it's kind of threaded like sewing back and forth through some holes that are printed into that hinge part uh, so you can adjust it to fit the particular uh, terminal device that you're testing and you can test one terminal device after another and get a comparison for how they work just by unscrewing one and screwing the other in its place, hooking up the Bowden cable, and whoops, I find that I got to readjust my Bowden cable because the uh, distance from the elbow to the attachment point here is not right. So that's easy to do with this design. And basically to make these cuffs, we print them flat, Use PLA, dip it in hot water, and just uh, after 15 seconds, you can pull it out. Um, it, if you're careful, you can 
form them, just let them sit on the table and, uh, and form them into this kind of taco shell shape. And that's uh, easy enough to do without any special rigs and so forth. So this is a lot easier to fabricate and we hope it'll be easy to use. You can use uh, a sticky back foam like moleskin or the foam like we're using on the wrist powered hands um, to make it more comfortable. But if just for your own lab testing you want to forego that, it'll give you an appreciation for how it feels to have a prosthesis that doesn't fit properly. <laughs> the padding is beneficial in terms of your comfort. And using this you can walk around and, and see what it's like to have a prosthesis all day. Your arm gets tired pretty quick and uh, you'll, you'll be able to experience what the user experiences. So that's really great for a designer. And that's it for now. We'll publish this on uh, Thingiverse and post about it and post links uh, on the uh, Google Plus and on the web page for the challenge. So that's it for now, Justine. Any questions? Thank you very much. I, I would like to point out that, um, of course, what you're showing here is an active device, but if you're doing something for a particular sport, it can be a passive device, in which case it would just, uh, the terminal device would just screw on to the you don't have to worry as much about the, the floating cable. Um, yes, indeed. So here's a hand. Does anybody in. help? If you're talking, but I don't, you're muted. You're okay. muted, so we can't hear you. Yeah, for instance, Justine, here's a hand that is uh, primarily cosmetic. Uh, it's supposed to look more like a hand, but there's a little space between the thumb and the fingers that can be used to grab a shopping bag or something like that. Or, you know, uh, a thing that doesn't have moving parts can also be very functional. So uh, that's an example. Good point. Thank you. Right. And for the challenge for something specific to a sport, it's certainly likely that for certain sports it would, it would just be a, a shape of the item. It doesn't even have to necessarily look like a hand. Definitely people should think outside the box. This does not have to look like like a hand. But the whole idea with this of the modularity is a very important concept. Even though we're focusing here on um, something on sports, it's got a big, um, this has a big impact in a lot of ways um, <clears throat> on the vocational aspects as well. So I don't see any questions that have come in uh, through the Q&A, but do anybody here on the call have any questions for Skip? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, last then, but certainly not least.